Hi guys, yet another video, uh, back working on the Fiesta, gonna crack on, uh, hopefully get some more bits off the list. Oh, don't forget, I've uploaded the new t-shirts onto the Big Cartel site, so I've got the new crossflow design that I've been busy drawing up and vectoring. See hats and stickers and hoodies and whatever else, uh, the link is in the description below. But for now, let's just concentrate on cracking on with the bits that need to be done on the, on the old Fiesta. Time to rebuild the back calipers. I have already cleaned up, wire brushed, and I paint them gold probably about a year ago now, hence why this one's already started to uh, rust back through. They were just second-hand ones. I think for now, I'm just gonna put the new pins in, new pads in, get them on the car, and at a later date, if I want, I will probably invest in some refurbished ones with all new pistons and seals and what have you. I could rebuild these, but I remember when I did sam them all back and paint them all, they were really, really rusty. So I think it would be better if I got brand new um, zinc plated or galvanised ones and then I'll start from scratch. But these will work, they just don't look that pretty at the moment. Bang the pads in, bang the pins in, get them on the car, plumb them up, use the car, worry about if I can ever be bothered to um, sort out this issue. But in the grand scheme of things, a little bit of surface rust on your calipers. Not the end of the world. So that's the rear calipers all built up, ready to bolt on. Then that's all ready for plumbing up the new brake lines. The wheels need a bit on the back. They're minion. So that's the uh, rear disc on. I've just got to sort out all the brake lines off the car onto the axle. Should have really done that probably with the axle off, but hey ho. Also been uh, working on the top brace bar. Um, Georgie boy at work sorted me out with these new bushes. So I just need to trim them back a bit so they fit in the gap. That's the new bar at a longer length. So that'll go in. And then I've got shorten the rose joint bit on the end. And then I've cut, uh, cut, one of the comments was saying about mountain bike back suspension arms. And they run the rose joint just on one side. So I've made this little plate, which is gonna go in there. And then I'll literally just have the rose joint sitting in between there and the uh, starter motor. Hopefully it'll fit, but we shall see. Okay, next up, I just want to finally rebuild all the turbos and make sure everything's tight. I've got to put a new seal in the big turbo and then all the oil returns and feeds, all the unions and stuff that need to go in there. And then this is ready to go on. I put the exhaust on for the final time with the gasket and this can go on for the final time. And then I can just double check the downpipe and make sure that that's all where I need it to be. A few of you guys have been commenting saying they don't, still don't quite understand uh, how this thing all kind of is plumbed in. So whilst it's off the car, it makes sense for me to show you guys. So I'll have the uh, air filter or trumpet on this end. So the air's gonna go in the big turbo and then I'll feed that straight into the face of the little turbo, which compounds the boost. So you multiply the pressure ratios of both. So you could run in effect, I don't know, 15 PSI out of the little turbo and then four PSI out of the big turbo and link pipe and out of the little turbo, uh, you'll have a combined boost of, I don't know, 25, 30 plus. So um, that's the cold side done. Then uh, when it comes out the exhaust, you need to look at these, these are, even though they're bolted, what looks like one lump, these are two separate turbos. So you've got a uh, K16, which is like a T25, so hot, cold side, hot side, and then you've got a K2627 hybrid, cold side, hot side. And so the exhaust comes in from the exhaust manifold, spins up the hot side of the small turbo, and then that then comes out into this little chamber that is actually the inlet of the hot side on the big turbo. So then once this spools up, and runs out of steam, we've got an internal wastegate on this hot side that then opens up, bypasses the little turbine, and then starts feeding the big turbo as well. And then the downpipe comes out the back here. And so that's your outlet for the exhaust. And then to like manage the whole lot, I've obviously got the uh, external wastegate on the manifold. So yeah, pretty crazy, pretty complicated. And obviously you've got two cores, two oil feeds, two oil returns. Hopefully it'll make two lots of uh, crazy noises. And you should get, as I said, the response of the little T5, T25 sort of turbo off the mark. And then the top end power of uh, the K2627 turbo is the equivalent of like a Garrett GT30. That's the theory, anyway. Whether it works, who knows? There's only one way to find out, so 
I'm always up for trying these new concepts out. So that's the big AN outlet for the oil return on the big turbo. However, the little one that I bought, unfortunately doesn't fit, the holes uh, don't line up. So I think I'm just gonna remake that flange out of this bit of alley and then chop this back and then TIG weld the AN fitting onto my new flange and it will also space it down a bit and hopefully clear some of these bolts. Stick that on there, it's in a bunch it, drill it all out, cut it out, grind it up, job's good. Okay, so I've just uh, welded on this union onto the homemade flange that I made to go on the bottom of the small turbo, and that'll be my oil return for the small turbo. Once that's bolted on, and I've made a little gasket for it. I've also got my old little uh, catch tank, oil catch tank, and I cut the pipes off. And now I'm welding on again A and fittings because it's something to do, and uh, I want to redo all of the breather system with all of the fancy pants Torx UK AN fittings uh, just because you know race car uh, and I've also done this piece which was my uh, crankcase block breather uh, cut the pipe off and I've welded on that AN fitting on there so I'll just give that a dusting over with black hammer iron and that'll be good to go um, and I'll probably just scotch bright this all up once I've finished welding it all up Okay, so I thought I would have a go at welding up my charge cooler and ice tank. So this was the bit that I got spun by Carlo the engineer and he turned it all down with these little lumps to look like bead rolls. Um, and then I've cut the base plate to go in the corner of the boot and I've cut the top with a threaded piece that I've got off of eBay with a nice fancy pants uh, screw on cap. So yeah, all I've got to do is just blob it all in, weld it all up and uh, I'll lave some inlets and outlets with some little barbs and weld them in to feed the radiator and the pumps that are in the boot for the charge cooler. Right, that's all welded up. Sick weld porn, some of it, some of it, a little bit of popcorn, but pretty happy with that. I've just tested, uh, just tested it with the kettle, filled it up with water, no leaks down the bottom, so I assume it's all sealed up. As I said, next stage, uh, drill some holes in it, weld in a uh, return and a feed, uh, and then I've just got to drill some mounting holes in it, and I'm probably going to need to put like a little bracket up top because it is quite high, and obviously. Uh, I don't want it falling over in the boot, but I reckon three bolts down the bottom and a funky little bracket to pick up off the side of the, the boot um, and we should be in business. I think I'm going to leave it sort of spun, I might just scotch bright the welds up a bit where it's gone a little bit furry, but I quite like the spun finish, machine finish to it because uh, I was thinking about powder coating it, but I think this looks pretty killer. So now it's just a case of pretty much bolting loads of bits on today. I've mounted it on the turbo manifold uh, with a new ST170 gasket, the steel pressed one. Uh, just mounted the turbo one for the last time, well, for the last time before I get it up and running. And uh, I've always been told, a little top tip, use just like bathroom silicon sealer instead of a gasket and that will seal your turbo to your exhaust manifold perfectly. So I'm told, uh, I know a lot of people who do it and they uh, rave about it, so don't deal with like, fiberglass or pressed steel uh, gaskets, no gaskets, just flat machined flanges, bit of silicon clear sealer, squish it on, bolt it up and somehow it seals it and it deals with the heat and that's a pretty good uh, little tip. Turbo bracket is now all on and the rose joint is all tightened up to take some of the load off of the uh, manifold so that's not going anywhere and obviously all of the top brace on the gearbox that's all on, tightened up and uh, my little top rose joint as well, just a little brace that I made up quite some time ago 
but that's all on and ready to roll. I mounted the downpipe again, but I still need to finish off welding it up at the top. But I just want to see sort of clearance down here because now I think I'm going to do the oil lines. I've mounted up the, uh, I don't know if you can see it in there, I've mounted up the oil return that I welded up for the small turbo and the big ones on the big turbo. And I've just got to connect them, clear all of the hot pipes, and get them down to those oil returns down there. Oh, and I've uh, turned around the fan belt because uh, someone on Instagram pointed out that I had it round the wrong way, apparently. And when I say that, I think they just meant that the uh, text was facing inwards. I don't think there's a direction on those belts. So yeah, let's just crack on and bolt some more bits up, see where we end up. Oh, and big up my mate Gary. He's hooked me up with a aluminium strut brace, which if I don't modify it to fit on this, shorten it, I'll modify it and make it fit on the uh, Sierra because both cars need a strut brace. And he's also given me a, a battery for my new battery box that's in there. And um, he's also given me some Cosworth spark plugs. So that's pretty handy because this is an old Area 6 head and I'm pretty sure it's converted to run on uh, Cosworth spark plugs because this engine was built probably before Focus RSs were available. Oh, and you can see I welded on an AN Union on that. And uh, I think I'm gonna mount this thing, depending on where the boost pipes go, uh, in and around here, so I've then got to make up all of the AN lines and the fitting, the braided lines to that as well. Make a little bracket. Love making a bracket. So yeah, it's looking good, looking crazy. Next up, I'll probably just bang the wastegate on because I want to see how the downpipe goes, and I need to make a bracket that goes from the downpipe onto probably where I pick up. I could pick up on where the radiator mounts. Do love a genuine tile wastegate. Treat your old self. Hopefully this will be big enough for the amount of gas that this thing's going to flow. It's in a good position on the uh, manifold though, so I think it, I think it should be right. Okay, next up I want to mount my freshly painted uh, crankcase breather plate with the AN fitting that I welded on. Um, just going to make myself up a gasket, bang that on, a couple of fresh bolts. Right, so that's the crank breather all bolted up. Uh, next off, I think we're going to mount the thermostat housing properly, and uh, I just need to put a little different end on it, and then mount the header tank that's going to go in this little hole here. So I've just turned down some little spaces on the lathe uh, to space this out, but I think I'm still going to have to just notch the front panel a little bit to give me a little bit more clearance on the uh, radiator cap. Uh, I don't know, I might get away with that. And they just run into uh, rib nuts that are in the front panel. Quite neat. In an ideal world, I probably should have made that back bracket a little bit uh, longer, but hey, hey. Also, just pop the screamer pipe down pipe on. Just pop down to Zach's, and uh, his latest thing that he's working on is this inlet, which is a Fiesta RS Turbo inlet, but he's building up a plenum. So you've got the bottom section of it, and then he's got this piece that will bolt on like that with some radius sort of trumpets. And then onto the top of that, he's gonna weld this piece. And then going forward, hold that for us now. He's gonna then mount a forward facing throttle body flange like so. So he's just gotta weld all that up. Be interesting to see what difference it makes on the original. Okay, next up, I want to try and bang my polycarbonate windows. I'm just going to do the front quarters and the glass wind-up bits, just to get the doors kind of done. Uh, and then I'm going to go on, move on to the rear quarters and all the ducts and stuff that need to go into that, and the back window and the boot. Yeah, these have all gone into the rubbers, all right. I'll probably leave the protective covers on because this stuff scratches as soon as you look at it. So the longer I can leave that on, uh, the less likely it is to scratch before I get it up and running. Got the quarter windows back in with the holes for the pop vents and the glass wind up mechanisms and all of the rubbers. Just sorting out the rear quarter windows, but I am having to trim a bit off of them. I didn't obviously get the cut file 100% right on this one, so there's probably about three mil along the back edge that I need to just shave off to make it actually fit in there, but that's easy enough. I'd rather they be too big than too small. So I've just mocked up the side ducts and the scoops and a piece of the uh, tumble dryer ducting is in there. I'm just about to put the back so that will 
to plop down onto the rear boot rad. I was just about to mount the back screen um, and then that's pretty much all the windows done. Uh, the little front poppers, I've been told by someone, someone's commented on these already saying that with the wind deflection off the windscreen you don't actually get much airflow through these but hey ho, they're there now. Um, I could always put like a pipe or something out if I really need some ventilation on a hot summer's day but there's no turning back now. Seat's kind of mounted in so that's all looking good. Just need to re-bend the and shorten the handbrake and then start putting all the dashboard in. Another good thing with drawing stuff up on the computer is that I can print it out one to one uh, and then just roughly fold it up to check uh, that brackets and little plates and things that I've designed are going to work. But this is actually going to weld onto my boom tube like so and then I've got cotton reels and then they'll obviously mount up onto the floor where I want them. So yeah, before I start cutting them all out, I can just double check that this is kind of going down the right path. Right, if you're wondering how I put these old rubbers and windows back in the car, I usually fish a bit of string or wire around inside the, the lip. Uh, obviously put the rubber around the window. So just leave a couple of little tails out, like so. Then you get the finest of fairy, lemon. Lube it up a bit. I'll smear that in a bit. Rotate the window 180 degrees. Press it in the hole. And once you've got it going, you just apply pressure to the back and pull the cable all the way around. So that's the polycar back screen all in. Um, the thing that I forgot kind of about when I last had the uh, polycarbonate screen in the old one um, is how much flex is in it. And uh, I was always thinking of doing some kind of angle, two alley angle strips, maybe with a load of holes in them. And then I can screw it onto the inside of the boot and then at certain points pick up on the window uh, just to give it a bit more bracing. Um, obviously I had one in before and it never popped out but it's always the nightmare scenario where you've got the windows open and you're ripping along the motorway and then it just flops out and uh, hits the person behind you so yeah I'm, I'm probably going to put some couple of little straps down it just to give it a little bit more support. Side windows aren't too bad because they're a lot smaller but that's got a lot of flex. So I'm just mocking up uh, cardboard template. I'm going to do a little folded heat shield for here just to save the rocker cover and the gasket. Probably doesn't need it, but figured I might as well whilst I'm cutting some other bits of stainless. I've got a uh, bracket down here This bolts onto the cotton reel for the radiator, and I'm just going to TIG weld it onto the uh, downpipe, that's for the screamer pipe, sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's my little cardboard template for that. So I can set that up, and then I've got a little brace. Hard to see. Got a little brace in here that goes from the downpipe um, to the one of the bolts that holds the gearbox on, and then I'm also doing this crazy folded piece. Uh, I'll do that out of mirror stainless steel uh, as a heat shield because that wire here is the CPS, and obviously it's really close to the downpipe. So if I can do some folded bit of mirror stainless steel, uh, that should hopefully. Uh, give me a bit of heat shielding from the downpipe and I'll probably put a, a fiberglass, silicon fiberglass sleeve over that as well just to keep the heat away from it. So another recent purchase are these. They look like pool noodles but when Zach popped over you had a little sit in the uh, seat and obviously with the low back your head's kind of uh, potentially going to be quite close to the bars and uh, from experience we know of someone who did whack their head on a roll cage and pass away, uh, one of Rob's friends, uh, and he always says if you ever have a cage that's close enough for you to whack your head on it in a big accident, it's worth putting some padding on it. So I've gone for the uh, lovely shade of ginger for my roll cage padding so I can cut this to size. I'll probably put it on the upright and try and uh, overhang uh, where it all bolts up at here and maybe put a bit on the top bar and the crossbar 
and I'll also probably put a bit on the door bar because obviously again people's heads are going to be around about here so safety first kids although ignore the fact that I'm missing a headrest and my head will probably fall off in an accident but won't worry about that so yeah it's all really shaping up pretty pleased with the progress once again ticking more bits off the something to do list uh, next up uh, I'm actually taking this down to powers hopefully on Saturday and I'm going to uh, cut the drive shafts to length and we're going to be sleeving them and then also I need to really try and bust the, the back on doing all of the brake lines and the clutch line and that's throughout the whole car so I've been buying unions and bits and bobs for that and I've also got uh, Adam kindly sorted me out all of the power leads and stuff and the and the crimps to put the terminals on the end of the power cables from the battery through to the kill switch and then onto the starter motor so yeah once that's done then it's literally just a case of finishing off bits of wiring possibly paint a bonnet if I can be bothered and uh, sorting out the oil feeds and returns for the turbos finishing off the downpipe and obviously making some sort of exhaust that connects to the boom tube uh, and then we're pretty much ready to put some fluids in it and fire it up really not that far off making some noise with this thing can't wait so that's it for another video thanks again for watching i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to hit like and subscribe and all that jazz uh, please check out the cartel site there'll be a link in the description below um, obviously i've got the new crossflow t-shirts up now uh, in blue black white and gray and uh, i'll be obviously as i said doing different designs of ztex cosworths pintos um, and whatever else people want i'll uh, just sort of start working on the artworks and I'll release them. These will be obviously superseded with the next design so get them whilst they're still available because once they're gone they're gone uh, and obviously it helps support the channel and, and what I'm trying to do here. Uh, thanks again for all of the comments and feedback. I really do appreciate your kind words and uh, help and advice along the way. Yeah I think that's pretty much it for now. Until next time I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy.